So a little bit of information about me first. Um, I run Norris Social, which is a digital marketing agency. Uh, we help brands to generate profit and grow their business through the use of social media. We do work with like, you know, Crown Plaza, um, Best Western Hotel. We also work with some of the bigger brands as well. We are doing some work with, um, well, we've got some work coming up with Gymshark soon. And we do work with a lot of influencers like your Lady Leishas, um, Olivia Towers, um, FEI organization, the, F, the Equine organi organization. We do a lot of work with them. Um, and our approach is we like to use storytelling. Everything is story-based. So it isn't your typical promo type of videos or content that we create. Everything is story-driven. Um, now, what I want you guys to focus on for this session specifically is storytelling. And hopefully by the end of this session, you're going to have a good understanding on the power of story, how to put together a story for whatever it is that you want to market to engage the audience that you want to engage with. Story is a powerful tool that a lot of people just don't seem to understand how to put together. It isn't the typical, you know, um, start with the beginning, have a middle and an end. Like that isn't storytelling. That's very basic uh, storytelling, but it's not storytelling. Storytelling is all about, you know, making people feel something. And there's a quote here from Seth Godin, who's considered um, the godfather of marketing. He, write, he offers a lot of useful books. If you haven't checked him out already, definitely worth picking up one of his books. Any one of his books, he's got multiple books. Um, but he says, great stories agree with our worldview. The best stories don't teach people anything new. Instead, the best stories agree with what the audience already believes and makes them feel smart and secure when reminded how right they were in the first place. Like for you guys working in the community, which we do a lot of as well, um, you have so many stories available to you because you've got so many real people that you're in contact with everyone that steps through your doors or comes to a session or gets in touch with you whatever it is people have got impactful stories and most of the time if you ask them they will be willing to share that with other people so hopefully this template that i'm going to show you which i'm going to show you in a bit it will give you the template that you can apply to whatever it is that you want to do now i'm just going to give you three examples on how it's how it's uh, relatable to you guys. Now, mainly Norris Social, we work with private companies, but we do work through an arm called Young Sully Hall. Now, Young Sully Hall is basically a constituted group within Sully Hall that helps youth leaders to reach the goals that they, whatever they want to achieve. But some of the projects that we've actually run within communities, having been asked by the council, police, public health, and organizations like that, is actually creating community hubs. So these are three examples. We've got many more, but this, these are three examples of community spaces that were unused, wasn't used by anyone. The timetable was empty and it was literally like an empty building. Um, I'll go with Hatford Brook as an example. Hatford Brook is, is an area within Sully Hall that had a lot of antisocial behavior. Um, they had a, a good community space, massive community space, football pitch outside. Everything was really good in there, but no one was using it. The, the community was disengaged and it was considered hard to reach as people like to label them, but they weren't actually hard to reach. It was easy to reach. You just needed to know what to say. Um, what we actually did, we created a campaign, a storytelling campaign and talked about a lot of the problems in the area and then offered some of the solutions and, and invited people to get involved. As a result, we had an open day and 27 residents turned up and they all wanted to set up their own CICs or, or at groups and activities. Out of those 27, 20 actually set up new groups. A few of them were CICs, some of them were just constituted groups. But from that, their timetable was full. And this is before COVID, obviously. Um, their timetable was full. It was fully booked up and the, the community was really thriving. Not only that, but we helped them to attract people from the community to attend these sessions. And these are anything from, you know, um, it could be a, a cooking class to a gardening session, like literally the, and a, we, they even had a stitch and knit and things like that. So we literally helped them to attract all these groups and you can attract any demographic with this form of storytelling. It doesn't matter how old they are, whether they're on social media or not, we'll show you how to impact um, their, their audience or their circle of influence. You don't need to specifically target people. You can just literally target people that are within their 
circle of influence. If it's elderly, then you can target their children. That's, that's the way we show you how to do it. Now, I won't go through the rest just for time. Um, we can literally target anything and you can target anything and get across any message using story. You can spread messages about crime and the issues around crime, health and well-being. You can raise aspirations and change behavior. You can literally achieve anything you want. And also prevention, something that we're actively doing right now, we've got a couple of pro projects running with the police, is prevention and awareness across multiple um, multiple issues. It could be county lines, it could be sexual exploitation, anything like that. And we've actually got a video that I'm going to show you as an example of sexual exploitation. But this is what I want you to see. Now, you might want to take a picture of this because this is the stages of a campaign in how it should be taken. Um, first of all, you've got to create a topic, right? We won't cover that today. We're going to focus on crafting the story. That's the part of the campaign that we're going to focus on today because we're limited on time. Now, crafting a story, um, there's, so much, there's so many different angles and perspectives that you can go with with this. But after this, I promise you, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna just see, everyone that comes to you, you're just going to see a story. You're literally going to see an opportunity to tell a story. The more you get to know people, and the more you unravel who they are, how they become, who they are, and the things that they've been through, the more you start to understand that, the more you're going to start seeing opportunities to help people through their story. Now, this is how, this is how we naturally uh, seek story. Even when the body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling itself stories. Now think about it when you're dreaming. When you're dreaming, all you're doing is telling your, your stories about the day, um, the previous day or that same day that you went to sleep. That's all you're doing. There might be something that occurred that day that affects your dream and you're telling yourself a story about it. So we naturally digest stories better. That's the way we like to receive information. So if that's the case, we like to receive information like that. We shouldn't be just putting out promo videos that are, you know, stories without conflict, stories without a challenge. Like there's no one living today that hasn't lived life without some form of challenge. Some people have bigger challenges. Some people have less challenges, but either way, you've got a challenge in there. One thing that I can encourage you guys today is definitely like don't hide from showing challenges. If things are hard and it's not easy, or you're struggling with certain area of like, you know, getting engagement or getting something up and running, let people know because people will be attracted to that because it reflects real life. As soon as you start showing something that's, you know, everything's perfect and running smoothly, people are more skeptical today than ever. Like if you start selling products, which is the equivalent of what we do for private companies, then if I'm saying this product is get great and there's no downfall to this product, then you're going to think, hold on, there's something there isn't telling me it's too good to be true. This is exactly the same in communities. But obviously in communities, you're not trying to generate a sale. What you're trying to do is win hearts and minds. That's ultimately what you're looking to do to get people to be a part of your cause or spread your cause. Now, here's an example that I'm going to play to you. Um, and this is a video that we actually put together for the police. And we had to specifically target um, Smithswood Charmsy Wood and King's Earth for this project. And it was funded by the police, but the approach that we was allowed to go with was full creativity. We was literally told, look, we just want to raise awareness of the dangers that young girls face online. You have full creativity, do what you want, but the target demographic is children from the age of 12 to 16 and also the parents. So that was our goal. So we had full creativity. Upon doing research, because we checked out the area, plus I happen to live in the area as well. Um, having done the research and looked into everything, we know that grime is a big factor for that age group. Grime is like pop music now. It's not like before where it was the underground music. It's literally pop music. Storms is like charting at the top. So it shows how popular that music is. So we went with that and we used a popular grime artist called Vader, who's well known within um, Birmingham. And... I wrote the story. So the story is literally written by me. I worked with Vader. Vader put the story into lyrics and then we shot the video using real local young people, no actors. And that's a major key. Don't use actors. If you're creating content, never pay for actors. Always use um, local people because if you're sharing a, a video on social media and people see people that they recognize, they're more likely to watch it because it's such and such from down the road. 
and they're more likely to share it and people will start paying attention because it's somebody that they know rather than some random person that looks perfect. Um, so that's a major key with this. Now I'm going to play this um, and I want you to consciously, what I want you to do is consciously make notes of what, what you think worked well and why you think worked well because I'm going to explain it afterwards. So I'll play this now. Concentrate in classroom, so lost, so gone. Back to nowadays, she's always in a bad mood. All started up in a chat room, now she can't concentrate in classroom. So lost, so gone. Back to nowadays, she's always in a Watch bad mood. Watch what you're up to. Watch who you talk to. Somewhere down the line, those things might haunt you. Everyone's not for you. This is reality. Stay here with the evil that will lead you to tragedy. Look, life consists of doom and gloom. Young girl in the chat, don't know who's in the room. Only 13 still crush out the womb. Gotta be careful of what she consumes. Unaware of the world, blind and confused. Vulnerable as she wants to get fused. She's following randoms with no hesitation. All for that social boost. Regular day getting ready for class. Had double lessons of a whole day. Drag match. She's heading home and the whole way back. She's on her phone and friends know he's that. She's constantly smiling. Openly glad because the kid likes pics. Now he's flowing with chat. What she don't know is a catfish. And he's 10 years older in fact. Now this is the crazy bit. She has no idea of what age he is. So he takes advantage of this fact. And it builds her on by relationship. Trading stories. She opens up. No one listens. She shows trust. Her parents at work. Never home and stuff. So she confides and he shows her love. What she don't know is this guy is a predator, preying on her, yet there's no one to be telling her. And even if she had her doubts, she thinks he's God's messenger, total opposite in fact. The sad thing is now she's emotionally attached to this guy sending news, so she's sending him back, totally unaware of the poison. Watch what you're up to, watch who you talk to, somewhere down the line, those things might haunt you, everyone's not for you, this is reality, it's the of the evil, that will leave you in tragedy. That's when they say it's meeting time, so they meet and he tells her that he's 25, not seeming surprised, she leans and replies, and that don't matter, the keen's in her eyes. As this guy's been doing his homework, he thinks he knows what she needs and like, and as she thinks he's the decent type, she fails to see the deceit and lies. Because this guy's predatorial, now virginity's holding a memorial, the poor girl consented to it because it diluted her thoughts like cordial, plus he added coke and vodka to the mix, let his true colour start following in. Talk about taking advantage. He was thinking like a monster thinks she wasn't enough and I wants to link with her friends and she sees no wrong in this. Well, that's what you call brainwash. And this guy's lost in sin, so she brings a friend round if she wants to chill. Time flies by and the guy goes missing. She heads outside and to her surprise, she sees him right there with a friend kissing. That's when she goes to leave and he reminds her that he's got a load of these news that she said now he's using them as a weapon. She don't even know it, please. Understand these things are happening. I know it might sound wild and baffling, but in that case, he pulled his sad face, dropped a bit of bribery. She went back with it the following Friday. She had it again, doing drug cocktails with his man and his friend. Little did she know he added a little extra. And now she's crashed out on the bed, literally raping. She still don't see a victim of abuse and she still won't see until she grows, has a child of her own. But now it's too late, he's got a hold of her spirit. Now it's all flashing through her mind. The first messages to the lights from the first impressions to the lies. It took a time, but she's opened her eyes. Mentally scarred, but she's living her life. Positive steps, living it right. Don't let these words go over your head because the grass isn't always green around. Watch what you're up to. Watch who you talk to. Somewhere down the line, those things might haunt you. Everyone's not for you. This is reality. Stay clear of the evil that will leave you in tragedy. Okay, so that video was called um, Catfish. And Catfish is basically when someone sets out to start a relation with, relationship with somebody online, full well knowing they're not the person that they're projecting to be. And it's happening uh, more often than what you think. Um, some of you guys probably already know that anyway. Um, but yeah, that video was basically a storyline. It was a story type of advert, although it doesn't come across like the typical type of advert that you would come across. Um, as a result of that, um, we had massive engagement. We reached over 100,000 people within a week. Um, within that week, um, we ran an advert, which was, I think it was £150 that we spent. And we reached uh, 30,000 people just with that £150, but the rest of it was organic reach. That was because local people were watching it, kids and adults, 
watching it and sharing it. As you can see from the bottom, it says 884 shares. That's real people from the community that are sharing this. So this, this isn't just like, you know, paid adverts and putting a lot of money into it. 150 pound for an advert is, is a low, low budget in comparison to what we typically spend for private companies. Um, but it's all about story. If you've got a powerful enough story or you've got a powerful enough um, topic that you want to tell a story about, then it is going to spread, but you have to make it relatable to the target audience that you have. That is a number one key. If, if you know your audience, the better you know your audience and you understand their psychographics rather than just their demographics, then it will change everything. Now, what I mean by psychographics is, you know, the beliefs that these people have. You've got demographics, which is the age, location, all that type of stuff, gender, that's demographics, but psychographics is something often people don't talk about and that's the belief system that people hold like people can come from a different culture people can come from a different area but if they share similar beliefs you can market the same message to those people because it's all about a belief system and that's the most powerful one now i'm going to show you another one a quick tiktok example um this is just a quick tiktok example because this is showing how you can use story again but in a shorter form that one that I just showed you was slightly longer. I think it was three minutes, 20, something like that, which was for Facebook. And it also works well on Instagram for Instagram um, TV. Now, this one is specifically for TikTok and it shows you how you can do this. This is done with a phone. This is literally done with a phone, no high class equipment. And we didn't actually do this, but this is an influencer from TikTok that's UK based. And she wanted to raise awareness of a phone number that you can use if you're suffering from domestic violence. your location so we can send help straight away. We hear you, you are not alone. So that's a quick example, literally shot on a phone, one, one shot, there's not multiple shots or anything, shot on a phone and it's just creativity. That's all it is. And the truth of it is in communities, because the budget isn't as high as the, uh, the private sector, you have to be more creative to get results. But this is how you're going to achieve that. Now, this is one of the examples on how to put together a story. Now, this is what this take a picture of this as well, if you can, um, because this is this is where the power is. Now, the steps to creating a story, the first step that you want to understand and work out is what is your objective? So what do you want to happen as a result of someone watching your content or listening to your story or watching your story? What is the end goal? You have to start with the end in mind. So do you want people to turn up to a session and actually get involved? Do you want people to support your cause and share it on social media? Do you want to attract volunteers to get involved from the local community that are actually going to help you out and, and become a member of your workforce. Like you need to ask these questions. Once you understand that you start with that because that's what you want someone to do at the end of watching your content, because you guys aren't trying to get a sale like private businesses. What you're trying to do is get um, community buy-in so that people attend or get involved. So that's the goal that you're trying to achieve. Now, after you've now after you understand that, you've got to think first of all the hook, right? So that's point number two, the hook. Why should they listen? You literally have three seconds to grab people's attention on social media when they're scrolling down on their phone and they're on TikTok or when they're on Facebook or Instagram, whatever platform it is. You've got literally a short amount of time to grab that attention, and that's the hook. In that other video, the first one about sexual exploitation, the hook was it started at the end. Right? I don't know if you noticed that, but the first thing is it started at the end. So it started with her walking down an alleyway, looking behind her and looking shocked. If someone's seen that, picture someone seeing that with no sound, 
they're, si- they're looking at a girl walking down the alleyway and she's looking surprised and shocked. And they're going to think, hold on, what's this? Let me stop and tap so I can hear the sound. That's the first goal. You've got to get them to listen because why are they going to listen to yours above everyone else's? Otherwise, they're just going to scroll down and just continue browsing. So that's the first thing. You've got to get that hook. Another way that you can get a hook is by using a thumbnail. So the thumbnail is the first image that they see for the first second or so when they're scrolling down. And there's ways that you can use color psychology to actually grab their attention. In the UK, color psychology that's really useful to know is uh, the color red. If you've got the color red in your content and it's the first thing that they see when it pops up, it's going to grab attention because red means stop in, in, in the UK culture. In China, it's totally different if you're advertising over there, but obviously you're not. Um, it's totally different. So if you know that red is useful, you've got to think, how can you package red into your story? You don't just want to put a red screen. You want to put something that's red into your image, whether she's wearing a red top or whether she's wearing like, you know, she's got something red in her hand or something like that. You, that's how you need to preferably put it in. Now, after you've hooked their attention, the next step is you've got to give them context because that's the first question they're going to be asking. You know, when someone tells you a story and it's like kind of unbelievable, and they say to you, oh, did you hear what happened the other day? And you'd be like, nah, what, what happened? They'll tell you the story. And then you say, well, the first thing you want to know is when did it happen and how did it happen and why did it happen? That's most of the time you're asking for context because that's what you want to try and understand and put the story together in your own mind. That's what you're trying to do to put it together. So you need to do this for them because the goal of this here is to answer all their questions before they've even asked them because that's how you grab people. The hook is to grab their attention, but then you need to draw them in. The same way a film draws people in. A film draws you in, in the sense of like, you know, when you're watching a two hour film, you don't even recognize that you're watching a two hour film. Like you literally, like you're you're sucked in, time's passing and you don't snap out of it until something happens, your phone rings and then you realize you're watching a film, but you're imagining in your head, what would I do in that situation? What would I do if that was me? Like. That's the sign of good storytelling when it's, when it's pulling you in. Now you have to do exactly the same when you're storytelling for your business or for whatever it is that you want to achieve, you need to pull them in. Right. So that's that stage. Um, context, a, a, a quick key for that is, you know, just like the woman's one, um, that did it hiding while the man was in the shower on the TikTok. The context in that was literally her, um, having the audio, you could have, you could hear the audio. We hear before we see. That's what often happens. And a lot of people don't recognize that sound is so important. We hear before we see. So we heard the shower running. We heard that obviously someone got into the shower and she's sneaking the phone call. That was obvious. She's obviously got blood on her face. The blood on her face was the hook. Cause when you're scrolling down on TikTok, which is a fast platform, you've got to really be good on TikTok to hook people's attention. So she used the hook and then she gave context. The next part is the challenge or the conflict. Now, these can be one in the same. They don't have to be separate. You don't have to have all these steps. Literally, you can, you can probably miss out challenge or you definitely can't miss out conflict. You need a conflict of some sort, but you can miss out challenge. Now, I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Pixar. Does that, has everyone watched uh, Pixar movies? Yeah. All right. So Pixar are considered the best at what they do. They're considered like, you know, they're the top tier for storytelling. A lot of people don't know this, but um, Steve Jobs, he was actually sacked from Apple. Now he was sacked from Apple as the CEO and he went to work at Pixar for a number of years. When he went to Pixar, he learned storytelling. Then he went back to Apple and started using storytelling for his keynotes and for his marketing. Then Apple become the beast that it is today as a result of the storytelling. That's all it literally was. Obviously, they make great products as well, but it was the storytelling that really like projected them to that next level. And he openly says that he's got he's got interviews where he says, you know, he didn't know how to storytell before, but now he does, and this is what he's done with it. So it shows you the power of story if you get if you get to understand this. Now, what Pixar does, I use Toy Story. Has everyone seen Toy Story? Yeah. Um, Toy Story, if you remember how it starts is literally, um, it shows Woody's world. Woody's like the king of the toys. He's, he's Andy's favorite toy. He's the one that, you know, he wants to play with all the time. He takes him everywhere. Then all of a sudden, um, after it set the scene and show the normal world, it shows Buzz Lightyear coming. 
Now, Buzz Lightyear is now the new toy because it's the upgraded toy. Now, this is the conflict for Woody because Woody's the main character in that film. So this is the conflict for Woody because he's like, who's this guy stepping on my territory? And he's taking my friend, Andy. So there's the conflict. Do you get me? So every, every stage of the film, there's different levels of conflict. Like after that conflict, there's more conflict that happens after that when Buzz really thinks he can fly, but actually it turns out he can't fly. <laughs> so that's another conflict. Do you get me? Like, so it's full of conflicts. You have to make your content as full of conflict as you can. The, be- the more conflict you have in it, the more people are going to get sucked in and engage with it. So with conflict, it can be internal or it can be external. Now, this is a major key. Like, say if you're promoting fitness, people want to get fit for different reasons. Some people want to get fit because they want to look good. Some people want to get fit because they want to feel good. But some people, most people, want to get fit because of the internal reasons of like, you know, they're not, they don't feel good enough about something or they want to improve something. When they look in the mirror, they're not liking what they see. But they're not necessarily always saying that out loud. You get me? So in a world of social media, there's going to be a number of different reasons for whatever it is that you do. You need to think about all right, what are the internal and external conflicts that people are going to have? And how can I show and prove that I understand this through story? Does that make sense? So back to the quote of Seth Godin, good storytelling is confirming what people already believe in their head. So all you're doing is proving that you understand people through this story. If you prove you understand, then they're going to be like, well, I can be a part of that brand because they get me. They understand me. I don't have to explain myself. I can just turn up and they've already got the solutions to my problems. Do you get me? So that's where you want to be. And it's important because that will enable you to be top of mind above anyone else. If you are competing with anyone else, I don't know whether you are or if you're not, but if, you, if you're top of mind, you're always 100% going to beat the competitor. And you're always going to like, you, you're going to be top of mind when they're bored, when they've got nothing to do and they think, oh, what can we do? Oh, we can go to this session down the road. Remember that one in the video? Oh, I haven't see, see, seen it yet. And then they show their friend the video. And then that's how things get shared on social media, the shareability behind it. So that's the conflict. Now, the resolution is more about how it ends. So... The resolution is normally where you come into it. So you presented the, the world that they live in, you've hooked their attention, you've gave them context and you've showed the conflict, which is the problem most of the time. Now the resolution is you guys, because you guys are the solution to their problems. That's how you want to frame yourself. You want to show that you understand them and you could potentially help them with whatever it is that they're going through. So that's how you guys are the resolution. You can give a lesson at the end if you want, but you don't have to. You could just end at the resolution. But you always want point eight, which is a recommended call to action. You always want them to do something. Remember how we started with point number one? What was, uh, what was your objective? Always have your objective as the call to action. That is a key. Like After the watch the video, you might show a logo. Then you'll say share with friends or come along to this session at this time. Leave the details. There's one call to action most of the time. You can sometimes have two, but it's always better to have one if possible because then it just simplifies the matter for the audience. Now, I want to leave some room for a Q&A for you guys because I want to kind of put this into context for you guys, but I'm going to just touch on a few keys for really like peaking the emotions because it's important that you make your content quite emotional in some kind of way. Now it's better, always better to show rather than tell, like don't tell people, you know, if you're talking about, I was scared for instance, or I was worried or whatever, rather than just saying it, show them through the emotion because it will always speak louder and it will always have a deeper impact to the audience. Also a surprise at the end, a twist, stories good stories always have a powerful twist at the end because that's how you remember them you know when you know you can't you're watching a film and you can't guess the ending and it surprises you and all of a sudden there's a twist most of the time you remember that film and you think it's a really good film because you you didn't see that coming do you get me so if you can create that which isn't easy to do that's kind of like advanced level um but if you can create that 
people are going to talk about you. Like people will talk. That's how you create that real good word of mouth buzz. And people will just want to know because they want to, they want to almost compete with each other. Well, will I see it coming? I think I'll see it coming. I normally, I normally get films. Like that's what most people think. And it's the same with content. People think to themselves, if someone says, oh, you'll never guess what's going to happen. That's a challenge. They're challenging a friend and the friend will watch it just to prove the friend wrong. <laughs> Do you get me? Like that's how people work. So when you understand that, you can use that. Also, um, colors. Now, colors is a key. And what I've done, I've actually sent a, a, a color, a, a psychology color wheel, which basically shows what different colors mean. And there's different understandings on, on what different colors mean. Like social media, for instance, social media, most platforms have their logo as blue because blue means trust. Blue means they want to gain your trust and gain your likability, which social media wants to do that because they want to use your data. So they want you to trust, trust them because ultimately they're after your data. So when they ask you to sign something or tick something, they want you to do it because that's how they monetize and make money. Do you get me? Same way with Donald Trump when he was making his speech, when he was running for president, he had a red tie on because red ties demand attention. Do you get me? There's, there's different. And then once he was in office, he switched to a blue tie. I don't know if you noticed that, but that's what they often do. They switch it and they understand this because it works on a subconscious level. It's human nature. We naturally do it and we don't even know. Um, so what I want to do now is we'll open up for Q&A because I just want to make sure we've got enough time for that. Uh, I've tried to squeeze in as much as I can quickly. Um, but if you guys have got any questions relatable to what you guys do, if you want an example or a story or an idea of, of something that you could do for your business, just feel free to ask. Can I jump in straight away? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the examples that you gave, um, obviously they're, they're massively impactful because obviously they're talking about child grooming and domestic violence and things like that. So almost have a, you know, they, they grab the attention through almost a, I don't know, a negative context. Can you give some examples of like, if, if I'm looking at setting up the youth club or looking at community growing projects and things like that, what sort of positive um, you know, working on the you, your slide that you had, what sort of yeah. examples you would yo use as the storytelling for that? Yeah, sure. So if you're trying to set up a youth club, um, you really want to be talking about the impacts and the change that it can have on a child's life. That's the main thing. So a child might be going one way. Um, they might be going down the wrong route and they might be hanging around with the wrong friends or out of boredom. They're just simply doing bad things. You could show that. You could show that life was this, that was acting like this, but then they come across your youth club, which is the solution. So you could show almost like, you know, they're always getting shouted at by their mom. Their mom isn't happy with certain things. They're hanging around at the street, on the street after dark, and it's unsafe. They're in trouble. They might be getting approached by older kids to sell certain drugs or do certain things. You could show how actually you, you show an alternative. You show an alternative route to their life. Do you get me? So as a result of you coming in as the resolution, you're, you're there to show actually your life can go this route. If you do X, Y, Z, it might go to music. It might go to sport. It might go to whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. You can, you can intersect that in. So, and then you, you use that, that, that person as your like poster child as like to, to be your advertisement. So they, they would be the ones you'd do the interviews with and maybe even use their parents mock yeah. shouting at them or something like that. And you know, yeah, it used to be like this and yeah. then, clips back to the, the youth club of what we do there and then how it's all then changed and then developed them. Exactly. And what I would do to go one step further to make it even better as well, I'd make it gender specific. So if you're targeting girls, make one that's specific for girls. If you're targeting boys, make one specific to boys. And some people tend to shy away from that. But in today's day and age, you have to personalize content even more. Like if you can make it feel that, you know, you're specifically speaking to that person, like they're, it's going to resonate with them a lot more than if it's just a generic ad, if that makes sense. Yeah, nice one. Perfect. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, I'll hop in and just um, just ask a question from Monday night that Leah had sent me. Oh, yeah. um, it might be relevant for this group as well. Um, she sort of asked around, like, um, obviously, low-budget um, sort of software and editing programs that that can be used so something that you know you don't need to like heavily invest in like a really fancy program to edit your, sh your, your shots and make your video is there anything that you could suggest that maybe is a one-off cost or, or free potentially 
yeah. um, that can be used to film and edit. Yeah, sure. So that would be the content and filming and editing uh, sections after you've crafted your story. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, a lot of the time you can use your mobile phone if you're on a low budget and you can change your settings. If you go into most phones, modern phones now, go into your settings and you can go to camera and you can switch your phone to 4K if it isn't already on 4K. It's always useful to shoot in 24 frames per second because it's the same frames per second that movies make. So it gives the appearance that it's higher quality when naturally it's not. It's just the frame rate. It's just the way it's shot. And it's a little trick that you can use. Um, there are apps, free apps that you can actually use as well. Um, depending on what operating system you're using as in PC, you can use, um, there's a free program called uh, Final Cut. You should be able to get a, a free version of Final Cut, which you can use on Apple. Um, on the other one, um, PC, I'm not really sure with PC because I mainly use Apple, but there, there is a GoPro um, editing suite that you can download for free. Um, and you can use that. It doesn't have to be GoPro footage. You can upload your mobile footage to that and edit through that. And that's for free as well. Um, but there's plenty of others out there that you can use. Um, and also, I'd probably say it, I'd probably say it depends on the type of content. Cause obviously like that video, um, that we created there, that was more long form. If you're doing TikTok, you can use TikTok, download the app, like download the video that you film and then use it across other platforms. Um, and that works really well. So you can repurpose your content. So a lot of people use that on say Instagram reels, which is similar to TikTok. So the download from, from TikTok and then upload to Instagram Reels and use that on an advert. You could even do that. Um, there, there's loads. I could send you some resources um, with a list. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything that you have. Um, on PC, you've got Windows Movie Maker. But Windows yeah. Movie Maker is nowhere near as good as um, iMovie. iMovie is so easy once you start using it. But yeah. what a lot of people do is, is because some people might find their phones too small, they, they might use an iPad or something like that to then use Movie Maker on that. Yeah. Yeah. It does depend on what you're editing on as well, like the operating system. I'd say iPhone typically has got a lot more apps available, but you can get a lot of other useful ones on Android as well. From Yeah. If there's anything that you suggest, if you could send them through and I can circulate around everyone, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. No problem. Cool. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, am I all right to yeah, yeah. put one out there? Um, so obviously with our group, obviously we aim more towards with people with disabilities, learning dif uh, disabilities, um, people with higher needs. Mm. Um, so obviously we do sports with them, but we are trying to advertise, you know, trying to get more people involved because we've kind of found out that people do, who do have some types of uh, disabilities they are quite shy to you know come out they don't think they're you know good enough to do what yeah. they can do when in reality they are um so i was just going to ask if there was anything that you suggest that we could add yeah in our um program or yeah. to add boys sure um, so um there's, there's actually loads loads that you could do around that and there's a uh, it's because it's a highly emotional one um, there's a lot of emotions that you can pull out of that. Uh, so for example, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to be targeting the carers, um, whoever's caring, um, most of the time. So the way that you can make, the way that you can make that emotional is kind of showing, you know, um, they might be isolated, for instance, they might be yeah. isolated. They're not engaged with a lot of people and they're not engaged with, you know, um, people their age are people that share similar challenges. Like if they're, if they're, if they're spending time with people that are struggling with the same problems that they are, obviously it's going to help them, but also it's going to heighten their confidence. The more that they spend with other people, there's so many benefits to what you guys are doing, which is a powerful thing, but you can wrap that in a way and put that in a story of showing, you know, lockdowns just happened. It can show, someone with disabilities looking out of a window, looking like, you know, um, like they'd like to go out and do something, but they actually can't. Right. But now 
um, they're, they're doing the same routine, the wake up. You could even, here's a quick one off the top of my head. You could literally get them waking up, taking the covers off, going outside, looking outside, eating their breakfast, watching TV, going to bed, replay that three times, fast forwarded. And then straight away after that, you show actually a leaflet comes through the door or they see something on social media, which happens to be you. And they go along to that. And that's changed their daily routine to the point where they're now smiling. It shows the reaction. Going back to show them instead of telling them, you show them actually smiling, laughing, having fun, rather than just sitting there bored, looking drained. Do you get mm-hmm. me? Though? And you can yeah. use that powerfully just with a, a few couple of quick images just showing. It doesn't even have to be like super cinematic or shot on a, a great camera. You can get that across just by the emotion of the person that you're filming. And they don't need to be an actor. Just You can just give them a bit of direction, but... As long as you've got your shot list, which is a key, as long as you've got the shot list that you want to create, which you can create from this template, get it up. Um, this shot, you can create a shot list from that. So when you've got hook, you've got the exact shot written down underneath it. This is going to be the hook. So when you're filming, you film the hook, you know, that's done. Move on to the context, film the context, you know, that's done. Do you get me? And then go through the steps and, and that's how you do your shot list. Then when you come to edit, all of it's already categorized for you. All you've got to do is clip it together. Do you get yeah. That's literally it. And it just simplifies the whole process for you. Thank you. No problem. Any others? No? Sorry, I'll jump in again. Oh, sorry, no, go on, go on, Matt. You know, go on, go on. Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask about, um, like you used an example where you promoted on um, Facebook. Uh, yeah. a video w- would you always promote a piece of content rather than like your actual page because i don't think we've ever done a video um yeah. obviously we're a sports club so it's a, we're, we're not really targeting a specific um sort of group of people yeah um, um it's a good question and it's an important question glad you asked it um because you can make the best content but if no one's watching it it doesn't matter <laughs> then that's yeah. the reality of it um so we use the page called uh, Salio Community TV, which is one of the many pages that we manage. And it's a community page specifically for Sully Hall. It hasn't got a massive following. I think it's got 6,000 likes or something like that. But the engagement is ridiculous. Like we do get a lot of engagement. We get like monthly, we're on about, I think, 600,000 views on average um, we're getting. Um, and that's, that's without putting out regular content. We only use it for project-based stuff. Um, now, the, f- the funny thing is about um, Facebook. If we use Facebook and Instagram, for instance, because that's what most of, most of you are going to be using. Um, Facebook and Instagram, they actually limit the amount of people that you reach on your page. You could have a thousand people like your page, but not all a thousand people will see your content. And they do that on purpose because they want you to spend money on adverts. But if you're clever with your adverts, you can get a lot of reach for your adverts. So what we typically do is we post the content and then we'll... we'll we'll use a paid advert. We'd never boost an ad. So when you say, see boost at the bottom, never go to boost because you'll never get the most, most use of, of your money. You'll, they'll always like take more than what they should. There's a program called Facebook Power Editor and it's Facebook Ads Manager. Um, that's what it's also called. Use that instead. And what you can do with that, you can target a specific postcode, location, age of the person, um, even down to like, you know, if you want to target moms that have children under the age of 10, like you can do that. If you, if you want to target people that specifically work at a certain business or something like that, you can do that all through Facebook, all that data is there. And it's pretty simple. There's plenty of YouTube videos that explain how to go through it. Um, and it's, it's, it's simple. Like you don't really need to pay someone, even like us, we say to our clients all the time, if you've got an in-house marketing person, you can do it yourself because it isn't that complicated and it saves them cost. But, um, for that, when you're boosting an advert, it will help to get the organic reach. As soon as people start to see, it will naturally spread if it's good content. It will naturally just spread. So once you've gave it that little kickstart with a boost, it's going to just run. Now, TikTok, TikTok, I recommend everybody to use a TikTok because TikTok is one of the most easiest to get views, but it's one of the hardest to target a specific group. But if you go viral, you've got a higher chance of going viral on TikTok than what you have on Facebook and Instagram because TikTok push their content to see more people. So you've got more chances of reaching more people. Now, if you go viral, that's social proof that you can then use on your Facebook and Instagram pages. 
because then they will re- recognize you as the person that went viral for this video and they'll start following you on TikTok and things like that. And they'll start downloading it and sharing it across their own platforms. And that's where you get user, it's called user generated content. So it's people that come to your sessions actually sharing your content for you, which is what you want. And eventually you will have that if you start implementing things like this. Does that help? Yeah, that's, that's very, it's very interesting. Thank you. I keep seeing the, uh, the boost button underneath yeah. our posts and stuff. So I've not quite got into reading about that yet, but um, definitely yeah. something to look at the, the ads manager. Yeah, ads manager, definitely, and power editor. They're very good, very useful tools. And um, like for, I think we spent £150 um, and we got 30000 but that's because we was very specific for who we wanted to target. The more specific that you are, the more money they take per click if that makes sense. Uh, if you was to target, just say target a specific area and not put no uh, like age brackets into it, you'd get more reach. But the thing is you wouldn't get the quality of leads, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Can I ask uh, a quick question? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know if there was anyone going or not. Yeah, sure. Go, go ahead. Um, so I work for um, a mental health charity and um, we provide uh, physical activity sessions for those that have suffered or are suffering with mental, poor mental health. Okay. Um, our demographic is slightly older and we are missing out on, I would probably say, the 18 to 30s. Mm. Um, they are all over 30 and we know this is a huge group that has influence that we are missing out on. Um, but given obviously the storytelling, if we only really have clients that are kind of over the age of 30, how would you say is the best way to kind of not lose out on those people that we have, but bring in a new, yeah, a a new, new stream without yeah. kind of change? Because obviously we have to have to stick to what the project is we can't yeah. really rebrand it for a younger generation but how could we kind of get those people's interests yeah like our way if that makes sense yeah that makes sense so who how old are the new group that you want to target so it would be um 18 to 30s 18 to 30s so 18 to 30s um you can still you can still use storytelling. It would just be a separate campaign. You can still use it under the same brand. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I would say is you need, to, you need to further understand that demographic, as in how do they think, what do they believe, coming back to the psychographics that I mentioned earlier. Um, so the belief system of that age group is going to be very different to the age group that you currently have. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's say, for instance... Um, older demographics aren't really influencing the youngers it's the youngers really influencing the olders now whereas back before it used to be the other way around so what you can do now i think using tiktok because the the fastest growing demographic on tiktok right now is that that demographic that you're talking about at 18 to 30 they are the fastest growing on tiktok right now um i would make a story around mental health around their daily routine so the daily routines of 18 to like 30 year olds, what they're doing, they're going to college, they're going to uni, um, they're going to jobs. Some, most of the jobs that they're doing at that, those younger ages, they don't really like, they just do it. Um, so it's talking about how you deal with mental health along with doing those jobs. Um, it's giving context to it. That's how you give context. But also it might be a situation, you know, if, if they're in a relationship and it's unhealthy, um, it's talking about that as well. It might be a case of you proving that you understand what they're feeling. Like if it's social anxiety or something like that, you could show someone being asked, actually, why don't you come out or why don't you do something and they don't want to do it. And then you show what it feels like at that point in time when they feel that social anxiety, how it builds up and how it gradually gets worse and all those types of things. Um, I mean, I'm guessing you guys really understand the impacts of you know mental health. So you'll be able to demonstrate that in video. If you get me, the more you prove that you understand, which you do, then the more people will be gravitating towards you because you, if you understand, you must have the answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Can I I just ask about um, your call to action? Yeah. Um, 
because over the years I've tried loads of different sort of call to actions. Um, some have worked, some haven't worked. The one I always thought would have been the best was things like the like the sign up now, where you get them to fill in a contact form. But yeah. I found in the past, like I might have 10, 15 people fill in the form, but actually one of them maybe turns up or none. Did you have one? Do you have an idea on what the best call to actions tend to be or yeah. what you mean? If you want higher conversion rates for your call to action, so say for 100,000 people view your video and because you had that, that form that you talk about, only 17% actually clicked through to leave their details. But if you was to put send a message, see how it's got send a message next to the title? Yeah. That is better because it's only one click. The more clicks that you make, the more you're going to lose people. So every click that they have to make, the extra click, you're going to lose more and more people. And it's a trick that Amazon uses. That's why Amazon has a one click button to buy. And it works very well. Their conversion rate shot up soon as they did that. And I work with a lot of Shopify stores, quite large Shopify uh, stores. And we always recommend use one click. Soon as we recommend that, their conversion rate just shoots up dramatically. The content ain't changed. It's just that you've, you've put less barriers in front of the consumer because it's convenience. People buy into convenience. That's the number one like benefit of that and the number one thing that you need to be thinking of. So instead of a form, just get them to click send a message and send you the details of, um, you, can, you can basically line up an automated message when they message you to say, um, leave your name, address or contact details in that message. So it's automated as soon as they message you and then they'll send that. And then you've got that logged. It is a bit more tedious in the, se- in the sense of, you know, it isn't categorized for you. So you've got to go through your messages. But for the sake of a higher conversion rate, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and just one last quick one. Yeah. Would we as the people creating this content, would we ever put ourselves on the content videos, if that makes sense? Yeah. Um, it depends on the type of content that you're making. Um, some of it you can, yes. And you can actually feature in some of the stories. Um, cause it doesn't have to be like a story like this. A story can be a promo video, but it's just in, in a, in a story, uh, context in a narrative. Do you get me? Like, so you can put yourself within there, especially if you're talking about the solution, that's when you drop in. That's when you come in. You're not in there in the beginning bit, probably showing the world of the person that you're trying to address. You might be there when, you know, you come with a solution and they come to the actual youth club. That's when you feature in it. Do you get me? And you're the person that's taking them through and working with them and things like that. Because then the more familiar they get with your face, when they see you in person, it's like, yeah, it's that guy from the video. Do you get me? Like, and it's just a quicker yeah. way to build relationships as well. Yeah. And also in, in the young circles, I don't know what it is about video, but if they see you on a video and they recognize you, you've got clout. In communities <laughs> you've got you like your reputation just shoots up massively and they're more willing to listen to you oh yeah awesome no props brilliant i'm just conscious of time um but if anyone's got um sort of any any more questions that pops up or they think about something that have a bit of a light bulb moment at 3 a.m tomorrow morning then um then you know feel free to send an email i can forward it on to theo and you know we can help out where, wherever's ne- necessary um I think that that's about it for, for today. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's just a couple of things to, to go through just to, to kind of round things up. Um, if uh, we've... Oh. <laughs> Someone's like throwing a countdown. <laughs> um, yeah, um, we've, um, we've confirmed our March um, uh, community conversation is going to be around funding so if you want to sign up to that um head over to the same page that you used to book today um it's going to be around sort of writing bids where to look for funders that are going to support you um and some some useful hints and tips so get booking onto that if that's something that you fancy um and then if everyone could kind of um in the, using the chat box um on zoom below if you could just write um a couple of sentences about how you found today's session and or just maybe a rating one to ten about if you'd recommend today's session just so we can use the feedback um theo won't be uh won't be heartbroken if you didn't find yeah. it very useful <laughs> but hopefully it was really relevant to all of you um, any kind of feedback that you can uh, provide will be super useful for us. So um, if you can take a couple of minutes to, to do that, that would be very much appreciated. Um, other than that, I think we're, are we all done, Theo? Is there anything else you wanted to add 
Yeah, um, no, that's that's everything called done. If anyone does have any further questions or you need any support with anything or anything like that, um, my contact details are there. I mainly use Instagram um, if you want to reach out on there or you can just simply email me at theothompson at nourishsocial.co.uk and any questions that you got or anything like that, um, just give me a shout.